Hi, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Michael and I recently did an industry update as we do uh, a couple of times a year on the things that are changing in our world from a compliance and regulatory approval point of view. One of the topics we were talking about is the change of uh, position from the UK government regarding UK CA marking. Originally UK CA marking uh, was coming into force in 2024 uh, and over the last uh, few months, so uh, during the summer of 2023, the UK government announced that there was a, going to be an indefinite delay to adopting UK CA marking in the UK. That means that the UK will continue to accept CE marking for the foreseeable future. And so on the face of it, we think, oh, well, that's great news for manufacturers because that means that uh, they can just CE mark the product and think no more of it and get access to all of the different European markets. But Michael and I were having a conversation, uh, some of our industry peers as well, through a reflector that we have, and it highlighted it's not quite as simple as just saying the UK will just accept CE marking. And I think, Michael, you've looked into a couple of examples and um, yeah, maybe you can highlight a couple of examples where that might not necessarily be seamless. Yeah, thanks, Steve. So in most cases, um, it's fine. You can CE mark your radio equipment and based on the CE mark, you can ship your product now into Great Britain. You could already ship it into Northern Ireland, so it would be wrong to say uh, this is a change for the UK as such. We're really focusing on Great Britain here um, to complete the UK thing. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but it may not be quite time to, to rip up your uh, UK CA mark printing press just yet. One important thing to remember is the European Union is a political group of 27 different countries. And each different country has its own frequency allocation table. In the most cases, the frequency allocation tables match and overlap between all those European countries. If you have a frequency allocation for a type of radio with a consistent operation and every European country allows the same thing, we refer to that as a harmonized frequency band. So that's great. Let's say you've got a, a 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth device. That's a harmonized frequency band and the harmonized type of operation. So that could be sold anywhere in the European Union and in the UK and Great Britain. So if you've got a very simple CE marked product that can be used in the EU and in Great Britain, then you could CE mark it for the EU and then you could continue to supply that product into Great Britain. But if the frequency band isn't harmonized, you really need to think about that and you need to think, well, okay, I've CE marked it for the European Union, but can I ship it into Great Britain? I need to check first, is this frequency band permitted in Great Britain? It might seem like a small step and in most cases it will be a small step of just checking, okay, I've CE marked it, can I sell it into Britain? My point being, just because it's got a CE mark doesn't mean you can automatically ship it to Britain. It needs to be a CE marked product which can be used in Britain. If I think of some examples, there are some types of radio determination like tank probe radars, levelling radars, things like that, which have limitations in the UK. Uh, and so if you had CE marked one of those for uh, the European Union, you wouldn't necessarily be able to ship it to Great Britain because of this limitation. Um, also, there are some 24 gigahertz short range devices, for example, where there are limitations for use in Britain, but may not apply in other European countries. So if you've tested any of those devices with channels or power levels, which are OK in the European Union, but not OK in Great Britain, then you could not just automatically ship those products into Britain just because they've got a CE mark on them. Another example might be a 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi, where, as you may know, if you've been selling Wi-Fi type devices into the European Union, um, you can have Wi-Fi at a kind of higher power, and then there's a little section of the band 
where you have to have a lower power, 25 milliwatts, as a short range device, and then it goes back up again in power when you get into the Wi Fi 6E bands. Well, that little chunk of short range device band, around 5.8 gigahertz, the UK actually allows a higher power. So if you CE marked your radio, which is the lower power option, of course you can sell that into Britain because you're simply selling a product at a lower power than it could use. And that's perfectly okay. So a CE marked 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi into Great Britain is fine. The trick would be if you said, well, in the UK or in Great Britain, at least I want to make use of that higher power, then you'd need to test it for that higher power uh, to a draft standard. And then for, if it's only going to go into Great Britain, then with that higher power, then you'd need a UK approved body. For a UK approved body, you can't CE market based on a UK approved body, and you can't CE market with a European notified body because it's a non European power level. So you'd end up having to use the UK CA mark with a UK approved body so that you could use the higher power. Just to complicate it even further, if you were going to sell that same unit into Northern Ireland, which from a legal trade point of view is in the CE marking region, but from a spectrum planning point of view, it's the same Ofcom requirements of the whole of the UK. So Northern Ireland is CE marking and allows a higher power. So you could take a strange route of CE marking it, but as a class two device just for Northern Ireland, and then it's a CE mark device. But this is, uh, it really requires you to understand what I'm talking about there. Um, but all I'm trying to say is CE marked equipment can now be shipped into Great Britain for radio equipment. That's great, but don't get carried away. You do need to check that that product can actually be used in the UK and it is being used in the way you want to use it. So that sounds straightforward enough. Although we have to remember the fact that the Radio Equipment Directive, it might be uh, my most common um, used directive, but it's not the only one. There's the Radio Equipment Directive, there's medical device directives or regulations, there's, we talked earlier about, a new battery requirements. And not all of these directives are covered in the UK's statement to um, allow CE marking. So that could be problematic if multiple directives apply to your product. Mm. Let's say, for example, you've got a radio-enabled medical device. If you've got a mixture of uh, directives and regulations, you need to check which ones the UK has said will accept CE marking, because there might be others where the UK has not yet said that. And so you might end up being able to accept the CE mark for some of the directives, and requiring the UK CA mark for other directives or regulations. I think, yeah. Simple, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think that's the point, actually. Um, it, it's, it's quite nuanced, isn't it? Um, and so really the message for manufacturers here is to uh, look at the detail, because as they say, the devil is always in the detail. And if you're making, for example, a radio device that is embedded into a medical product, or the whole thing is a medical device, it comes under both the radio regulations and medical regulations. And if on the radio side it's a UK only device, then you will have to UK CA market. But the medical devices directive or the MDR, medical devices regulation going forward, um, was never going to be a UK CA mark directive or regulation in the UK. And in those circumstances, you'll have to both UK CA market and CE market have two different declarations of conformity, one an EU declaration of conformity and the other a UK declaration of conformity to make sure that you're covered under both sets of requirements. And so we, I guess we really appreciate it, it it's difficult it's it's nuanced uh, and it's complicated if you're struggling with it and you need some help and people like myself and our colleagues within element are here to help you feel free to reach out to us and hopefully uh, we can steer you down the right path thanks for tuning in and uh, be sure to continue to follow our industry updates thanks a lot thank you